You love watching and talking about sports, so why not turn that passion into a career in sports broadcasting at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting? Hi, I'm Matt Abaticola from Sports Radio 670 The Score, Chicago's number one sports talk station. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without the time that I spent at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. For more information, go to beonair.com forward slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting, where sports broadcasting careers begin. Joining us right now, the man that set everything up, got us here, set up Adel DeBolch. He is the leader of Emerald Smoke MMA Gym, the one and only Colin Williams. Colin, how's everything going today? Not too bad. How are you guys? We're not too bad. Really no complaints. It's a little hot outside today. 87 degrees. It's not my cup of tea, but I like about 70s. Yeah, me too. Especially with this humidity, I'm not a, I'm not really a fan. Yeah, I'm a 70s guy too. A 70s guy too. This is, this is a little bit too much. Now, Colin, explain to the fans a little bit about the Battle of the Bulge 2 contest. Sure. Uh, well, we did our first Battle of the Bulge uh, right when we opened the gym. Uh, the purpose of it was sort of to bring MMA as a fitness vehicle to people who have never done it. Um, obviously, as you guys know, it's a great way to lose weight. It's a great way to just exercise. Um, so the first one was successful. Both of our guys, one of them is actually here, Mark Mantla, um, actually lost around 25 pounds. Um, and that was in two months. So it was so successful that we decided that we would do a second round and we'd do it with women. Now, what made you originally start the contest? Um, it was really a way for us to bring, I guess, MMA to people who had never experienced it. Uh, if we could get some folks who, you know, maybe were interested in it, but never given it a shot, uh, we thought that this would be a good way to sort of bring it to them uh, and show that, you know, it's not, it's not all about getting kicked in the face. It's not all, all about broken noses. It's, it's about fitness too. Um, so that was, it was just a vehicle we thought we could get it out to people who hadn't experienced it before. You know, like what we were talking about earlier, and I thought A-Train brought up a really good point. Fitness is so overlooked in this sport. If you look at the fight last Saturday night between Frank Mir and Roy Nelson, it's not the, you know, everyone knows, you know, Roy kind of suffered from about pneumonia. But you can tell his cardio hasn't always been there because he's so low because he's so heavy. You know, when he showed it, showed it about with Los Santos, he showed the same exact situation. Yep. So, you know, everyone's always called, oh, they know it's like, you know, maybe he needs to lose some weight, lose some cardio. And now Roy's kind of seeming to come more forward with that. In your mind, is physical fitness the most important part of this goal? I think it is. At least in our, we do a jiu-jitsu self-defense course here. And the, um, the first half of it is all conditioning. And the theory is that if you're not in good shape, then it doesn't matter where you go because somebody's just going to take you down and, and you're going to burn out. And you're not going to be able to execute everything that you've learned. So uh, I, I think it's the most important part. Uh, Mike Bozniak is our general manager here. He's a fighter. And it's, it's all about when you're actually in the fight, it's being able to last the, you know, the three rounds or the five rounds. If you can't do that, it doesn't matter what you know. How did you get involved in mixed martial arts? Uh, I got involved with it probably about five years ago, just doing it for fun. Uh, I started just kickboxing as a, a sort of an outlet. I had been a football player for a lot of years, um, and I just needed something else to do. I, I wanted to do something that was you know physical, uh, sort of had a football tinge to it, um, but obviously my football days were over, so uh, kickboxing seemed like a good mix. Any fam- any, who would you like in the world of kickboxing? Because, you know, kickboxing, you know, you got guys like Ray Seth, you know, Mirko Krokop was also in kickboxing, Pat Berry, another notable in the world, you know. It's such a popular sport. Was there anyone you looked emulating to get involved in kickboxing? Yeah, I was actually a, a Ramon Deckers fan. Okay, um, I've heard of Ramon, yes. Yeah, yeah, he's a, a Danish guy, and uh, yeah, if you ever YouTube any of his stuff, believe me, you'll become a fan too. <laughs> so. You know, then, so that led you into this, running this gym, or how did you get involved in owning, or owning and running the gym? I had actually belonged to a few gyms around the, the Chicagoland area and hadn't really found what I was looking for. Um, so after sort of bouncing from gym to gym and paying lots of money, uh, one day my wife literally said, you know, what if you just opened your own gym? And I hadn't really thought about it at the time. Um, and lo and behold, step after step after step, it's about a two-year process, here we sit. So. Man, it's really good though, you know, when it, behind every man is a great woman. If you, it's hard, you know, support, you know, it's, a lot of people like crushing everyone's dreams. Like, oh, I don't want you to do this. And you too much time away from me. You know, you have that support system. And I think that's the most important thing. Absolutely. She's been super supportive since day one. She does all our marketing and it's, it's been a very good thing. How long has the gym been open for? Uh, we were just going on about four and a half months. So we're still pretty brand new. In four and a half months, ladies and gentlemen, we've done all, you've done all this. This is just amazing. Now, how did everything come up? I see some Everlast stuff here. I see a Powerade banner as well. 
How is marketing so important as well to that point of view? Well, it's one of those things you need to get your name out. Um, obviously, that's sort of the, the very obvious thing. But at the same time, when you're doing what we do, you need to get the word out to people that it's, you know, their initial reaction is going to be, I've seen that on TV. I've seen guys with their heads split open. I, 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 that's not what I want to do. So for us, it's really been a process of getting the name out and saying, that's not what you have to do here. You can come and do all the training. Um, if you want to you know, crack heads and break noses, that's fine. We offer it, but 90% of people want nothing to do with that. So really getting the word out there that you can come in, get a workout, you know, hit some things, you know, take the stress out of work. Uh, <laughs> I think Colin Williams from Emerald Smoke MMA joining us right here on the Fight Club Chicago on sportstownchicago.com. Can you explain, how did you get picked Tara and Liz to be a part of it? We actually, we had done some, some social media stuff asking for contestants and I mean, to be bluntly honest, we, we sort of interviewed people, um, not in person, but you know, over the series of emails and questioned them and uh, they just seemed to be the two who were most committed to it, so we picked those two. Now, how many people, like, do you interview them, like, what are you looking for? What was the criteria for them to enter the contest and be a part of this? Sure, well, we have a certain amount of requirements. It's that you have to take four classes a day. You have to agree to, to do our video confessionals. Uh, you have to agree to be weighed. Um, so, you know, that's, and actually that's a concern for a lot of women. They don't want that type of stuff out there. Um, so we basically were looking for folks who were open to, you know, sort of putting themselves out there into the world and saying, you know, I'm doing this and I'm proud of it and it's, it's not a big deal and I'm gonna talk about it and, so on so forth. What does the contest entail? Like, how long is the contest? What do they have to do with their The contest is two months. Uh, basically, the requirement is you got to show to at least four classes a day, uh, or four classes a week, I'm sorry. <laughs> four classes a day. <laughs> no. Four classes a week. You can choose whatever classes you want to do. Uh, it's totally up to you. If you want to do jiu-jitsu, you want to do kickboxing, it doesn't matter. You just got to come to four. Uh, every week, you have to agree to be weighed in, um, and then you have to do a video confessional once a week. That's amazing. So, like you said, a lot of women don't really like to be weighed. Exactly. I can't still get my girlfriend to tell me her wig until I turn my head. Yeah, yeah, my wife will not talk about it. So. It's just like a woman thing. It's like, why am I going to tell you my wig? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's right. You just look at it and be like, yes, honey, you look fantastic. Yeah. You look awesome. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you weigh. Exactly. <laughs> but no, that's one of those things where, you know, it, but it's good though, you know, that they were secure and confident in themselves. Like, okay, I want to do this. I don't care what people think about me. This is what I want to lose weight. I think it's a great concept. It was a great idea because, you know, like you said, you know, female MMA, just in general, you need to get the word out there, especially with the women. We, we're starting to get more females on the show. And that's one of the things they talk about is, you know, people ask for me, and, you know, why, why are you doing this and their looks? So then, you know, it's the public's most important thing. Right. You know, this helps you guys out as well, you know, because there's getting females in here. Now, how has the feedback been so far with, you know, the fact that you are having females entered into this contest? Ah, it's been fantastic. Actually, yesterday we had probably our first class that was about 50-50. So, um, obviously, it's always typically a little bit more male-heavy, so that was kind of cool to see. Um, and that's what we're looking for. I mean, we're open to everybody. It's not just a guy's show. So. How many classes do you guys run? Uh, we run probably about 35 a week. Um, so, around five, uh, I mean, I guess actually about six a day probably because we're open six days a week. Um, so, that's about, yeah, about 35, 30, 35 classes a week. Now, what kind of classes do you guys run? We do everything. We do uh, sort of a mixed uh, MMA class. So if you want to try a little bit of everything, that's the class. Uh, we do jiu-jitsu, both ground techniques and self-defense. Uh, we do basic kickboxing. Uh, we do boxing. And then on Saturday, we actually do yoga and a core class. You take any classes? I take a lot of classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm here all the time, so I figure it's rather than you know sit around and do business stuff, it's more fun to just hop in and do the classes. What classes are you taking? I'm doing almost all jiu-jitsu. I did a lot of kickboxing before the gym opened. I didn't have a whole lot of exposure to jiu-jitsu, so I've sort of dived head in. Um, I think our instructor, Tomas, thinks I do too many classes. <laughs> <laughs> he's never really wrong with me. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, he's pretty convinced that I'm going to burn out, but uh, yeah, I'm doing probably 10 to 12 classes a week. At least. Wow. Yeah, how so do you manage that? How do you balance that with you know running a gym and then taking the classes? Uh, well, it's you just find a way. You know, I mean, really during that time, there, there's everybody's in here. Uh, there's classes going on, so it's not exactly the prime time to be handling business stuff. So you, you're better off just being involved in a class and socializing than trying to sit behind the desk and get stuff done. Colin Williams from Emerald Smoke MMA joining us right here on SportstownChicago.com as we are live here at Emerald Smoke MMA 7-Eleven West Green in downtown Chicago. We're in the cage. And this is a great, great concept. And we want to thank you before we even end the interview. Thank you for letting us do it. 
Do the whole show on a cage. I think this is a really cool novel concept. Absolutely. So we are the trendsetters. Yeah. <laughs> we're, here, we're here gratefully to be involved with Arnold Smoke MMA. Now, at the end of the contest, what is, for who wins the contest, what is the prize? It's basically a free six month membership. Okay. So you get to, edit. the membership is free for them during the two months that they're competing. Okay. Uh, and whoever wins gets to continue for free for six months. Now, how can fans get information about this? Uh, you can look at us. Uh, we've got emeraldsmokemma.com as our website. You can check us out on Twitter. You can check us out on Facebook. Uh, we're sort of all about. We've been on WGN now, and we're, we're trying to get our names out there. Start blow up a little bit. I saw the thing about WGN. We put it on our Facebook fan page. We got a great response. How can the fans get a hold of you? Uh, you can just give me a shout uh, or Mike a shout. It's just Colin at emeraldsmokemma.com or Mike at emeraldsmokemma.com or or just drop us a line at info at emeraldsmokemma.com. And Colin, if me and the A train were talking, I don't know if you heard us earlier, and we need to talk about maybe us getting it. Is going to be a fatal the we're, we're, Yeah, we're, we're definitely open to it. I like this idea. <laughs> we were sitting here just kind of brainstorming, so I'm kind of thinking maybe if you're going to do a third a third edition. Yeah, we're absolutely going to. We would definitely like to get involved in it. Maybe we can end that one with a sparring match. I oh. want to. He, <laughs> he keeps denying me the chance. He keeps turning me down. <laughs> well, I don't know I'm why. open to it. Say it's <laughs> if you guys want to do it, we're in. I'm open to doing it. If you're open to it, I want to kick your butt, actually. Yeah, right. I want to see who the real, the toughest man on this show is. We got to get Wade involved. I'm too. Wade can be the referee. <laughs> I'll, face the, I'll face the winner of you guys. Okay. <laughs> and you're already the champ, all right? Yeah, you're already the champ. The host of the show at least gets, wow. to, gets to look and observe a little bit. You're the tent. Fans are listening. Maybe. I mean, wow. it's a little bit of a cruise from my house. <laughs> call, call out the A train, but Colin, thank you so much for letting us do the remote today. This is such a fantastic event. We're so excited to be here. Looking forward to it for the last couple of weeks. We look forward to the winnings in a couple of hours, and we'll definitely get you back on the show real soon. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for having me. All right, Colin. Thank right, you so much. All right. And that was Colin Williams from Emerald Smoke MMA. Let's go take a quick break here. Coming up. It's going to be showtime. Anthony Pettis coming up next. Discuss Clay Guido and what does he think of Gray Maynard saying he is overrated. Anthony Pettis coming up next. We're going to fight Club Chicago. Sports not Chicago.